السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته بسم الله والحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله زاد المستقنع في الإمام الحجاوي رحمة الله عليه we reached where the Imam has written باب دخول مكة باب دخول مكة the chapter pertaining to entering into مكة شيخ منصور he says دخول مكة أي كيف يدخل المحرم مكة how does the end how does the mahrim enter into Bakka? This is what the Imam is going to talk about. From which direction? And which door? And the timing for entering into Mecca. These kind of issues and others is what the author is going to mention. The author he says, It's sunnah that the person enters from the highest part of Mecca. Sheikh Mansur, he says, that it's the sunnah that the person enters from the highest part of Mecca from the Junub, from the north. From a place that is known as Kada, on the same pattern of the word Sama. So Kada and Sama, the same sound. Uh, Sheikh Sami bin Abdurrahman Nabahan, he said, Al Ma'rufa bi Rabi al Hajjun. That this place that the Prophet ﷺ entered from, the high part of Mecca, is known as Rabi al Hajjun. As uh, sorry, the Ray al Hajjun, the Ray al Hajjun. The evidence that the Prophet ﷺ would enter from the high parts of Mecca and the high mountain passes is in the Hadith in Bukhari Muslim, the Hadith of Ibn Amr radiallahu anhu. It's mentioned that the Prophet ﷺ came Mecca from the Kadain, from the Taniyat al Ulya, التي ببطحاء that the Prophet وسلم, he entered Mecca from the place called Kadda, from the high valley, uh, at a place called Batha. And the Prophet وسلم, exited Mecca from the lower valleys. And also, what was mentioned by Aisha, and when the Prophet وسلم, came to Mecca, he entered from the highest part of it, and he left from the lowest. Of it. Uh, Sheikh Masood, he says, That the Prophet وسلم, left from a, a, a mountain pass, the lower mountain pass known as from the place or the direction of a place called Shabika Al An. So this is Sunnah if the person is passing by. The high parts of Mecca, then you would enter from the highest points of Mecca. If not, then the person enters from what is naturally in front of him. Uh, the author he says, Well, Masjid Umin Bari Bani Shayba, and the Masjid is entered from the door of Bani Shayba, the gate of Bani Shayba. Sheikh Masuri says, Yasun and Yatahar wa Dakhul Masjid in Bari Bani Shayba. It's recommended that the person strives to enter from the door of the gate of Bani Shayba. And this Gate is not found anymore. This door is not found anymore. But the ulama have said, and from them is Al Azraqi, Sahibu Akbar Mecca, the one who wrote the Akbar Mecca, the book of Akbar Mecca. Innahu al Musamma Bab Salam. Innahu al Musamma Bab Salam. That verily this door now is known as Bab Salam. Had al Bab Mawjudan ila Ahdi Qareeb. And this door has been present until recent times. And it's recommended to enter from it due to the following reasons. The Prophet ﷺ entered from that place itself, from those doors. Imam Tabrani in Al Awsat mentioned that Ibn Umar said, That the Prophet ﷺ entered and we entered with him from the door of Bani Abd Manaf. And it is the one that the people call Bab Bani Shayba. And we left towards Medina with the Prophet وسلم, from the door known as Al Harura. And it is the door known as Al Khiyatan. And also, one of the reasons, and because when you enter through this door, of Bab Salam, for example, or Bab, uh, Bab Bani Shayba, which is not there anymore, then you would end up facing the Kaaba and the door of the Kaaba. 
wal hajr wal hajr al aswad and you will end up facing the black stone of the kaaba so you sahil al taif al bada'at min indihi so it would become easy for the one who make a tawaf that he starts from the point where he entered that he's directly in front of the black stone and in front of the kaaba fa idha ra'a al bayt rafa'a yadayhi wa qala ma warada so the author tells us now that when you enter into the sanctuary where, you, where the Kaaba is, and you see the house of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the Kaaba, you raise your hands and you say the du'as that have been reported. Sheikh Mansour, he says, يَسُمْ لِلْدَّاخِلْ إِذَا رَعَ الْكَعْبَ أَنْ يَرْفَعَ يَدَيْهِ وَيَدْعُ بِالْدُعَى الْوَارِ That it's sunnah that the Prophet, that the person when he sees the Kaaba, he raises his hand and he says the du'as that were mentioned. وَهُوَ مَا رَوَى إِبْنُ أَبِي شَيْبَ عَنْ أُمَرْ رَضِي اللَّهُ عَنْ and it is that which Imam Ibn Abi Shayba narrated from Umar radiallahu anhu. Anna hu kana yadu idha ra'a al-bayt yaqul that Umar used to, when he would see the house of Allah to tell the Kaaba, he would make the following dua. Allah man ka salam wa min ka salam fahiyyina rabbana bis salam. Oh Allah, you are peace and from you is peace. So give us a life that is full of peace. Uh, the author, he says, thumma yatufu mattabi'a. Then the person, he makes the tawaf with his ihram fi muttabi'an. Sheikh Mansour, he said, Bada al-mu'allif yatakallamu an ahkam al-tawaf. The author has now started to speak about the relief pertaining to the tawaf. Wa sifat al-tawaf Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and the description of the tawaf of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Fa'awwala ma yasunnu li ta'if. So the first thing that is sunnah for the one who is making tawaf is al-ittiba'a. وصفته and its description أن يجعل وسط ردائه تحت آتقه الأيمن that the person takes his ridda the upper garment and he puts it under his uh, right armpit وطرفيه على آتقه الأيسر and the ends of the ridda would go over the left shoulder وعلم شيخ مسؤول says no أن الاتباع يستحب في طواف القدوم that the اتباع is recommended and Sunnah in the Tawaf, which is known as Tawaf al Qudum, which is the first Tawaf when you enter Mecca, or Hajj Ifrat or Quran. In Ahmad and Abi Dawood and the Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Tawaf Muttabi'an. The Hadith says that the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam made the Tawaf in the way that we described. Wa Sunnah in Yakun Ittiba' fi Jamil Ashwaq Sab'a min Bidat Tawaf. And it's Sunnah that this Ittiba' is in all of the seven rounds of the Tawaf from its beginning to its end. فَإِذَا فَرَغَ مِنَ الطَّوَابِ سَوَّ رِذَاهُ لَا سِيَمَا إِذَا أَرَادَ الصَّلَاةِ لِأَلَّا يُسَلِّي وَكَتَفَهُ مَكْشُوفٌ And if the person finishes from the seven rounds of the Tawaf, and the person puts his Rida back to how it should be, especially if he wants to pray, because the person shouldn't pray whilst his shoulder is uncovered. Uh, Sheikh Sami ibn Abd Ahmad, he said, أَنَّ الْمَشْرُوفِ الْإِطِّبَاءِ أَنْ يَكُونَ فِي بِدَايَةِ الطَّوَابِ that it's recommended or it's legislated that the um, that the iqtiba, that is, the iqtiba with the rida that the, that the muharim is wearing starts from the beginning of the tawaf or before it just by a little and it shouldn't be from the beginning of wearing the haram like many people do from the start of the miqat or from wherever they have traveled to, to Mecca, they put their uh, rida in the form of iqtiba, and it shouldn't be that. It should only be done at the beginning of the tawaf, or just a little before that. The author, he says, that the person, the one who's making the umrah, he starts with the tawaf of umrah. وَالْقَارِنُ وَالْمُفْرِدْ بِالْقُدُومِ and the Qarin and the Mufrid, they make the Tawaf al Qudum. So the one who's doing Hajj Tamattu, he will start with the Tawaf of the Umrah. Or the one who's there just to do Umrah by itself, will start with the Tawaf of the Umrah. And the one who is Qarin, doing the Hajj al Quran and the Hajj al Ifrad, he will do the Tawaf al Qudum. Sheikh Mansur, he said, إِذَا رَبْ دَخَلَ الْمُحْرِمْ مَسْجِدَ الْمَسْجِدَ فَإِنَّ أَوَّلَ مَا يَبْدَعُ بِهِ أَطَوَاف بِالْبَيْتِ بِأَمْرَيْنِ that when the person, the muhrim, enters into the masjid, then the first thing he starts with is the tawaf due to two reasons. First of them, فَعْلُ النَّبِي صَلَى اللَّهِ وَسَلَّمُ كَمَّا فِي بُخَارِ الْمُسْلِمَ عَنْ حَدِيثِ عَائِشَةِ Due to the action of the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم 
as is in the hadith of Bukhari and Muslim narrated by Aisha, Anna Aisha radiyallahu anha, Anna awwala shay'in bada'a bihi, that the first thing that the Prophet sallallahu started with, at-tawafu bil-bayt, was the tawaf of the Kaaba. Secondly, wali anna tawaf tahiyyatu al-masjid al-haram, because the tawaf is the tahiyya, you know we have the tahiyya when we go into the masjid, we pray to raka'a, the tawaf is the tahiyya of the masjid al-haram for the one who wants to make tawaf. Uh, so it's mustahab that the person starts with it if you are a person who is making umrah meaning that you are either doing umrah alone or you are doing hajj uh, then this is the tawaf of the umrah so what in kanat umrah umrah mufradah whether that's an umrah by itself or Umrah Tamattu' or that is the Umrah which is part of the Hajj Tamattu' wa in kunta qarinan aw mufridan fa had the tawaf al qudum but if you're doing Hajj al qiran aw ifrad then this is known as tawaf al qudum for you wa la yajibu ala al qarin wal mufrid tawaf al qudum and to note that the one who's doing Hajj al qiran aw Hajj al ifrad then it's not obligatory upon them to do this tawaf the tawaf al qudum so if they went to Mina directly, that would suffice them. There is no dislike for them. But it is recommended that they do the Tawaf al Qudum for the one, uh, for these two, as the Prophet did so. So what we mentioned there was the one who's doing Umrah or the one who's doing Hajj Tamatta, then this Tawaf for him is. Um, imperative. This tawaf that he is doing, uh, he must do it because it's the first thing that the Prophet start, started with. However, the one who is doing, um, the one who is doing Hajj al-Furad or Hajj al-Quran, these two they don't have to do it. It's recommend. It's not upon them to do so. The author he says, al-Aswad The person when he's going to start the tawaf, he faces his body towards the Hajj al-Aswad completely. Um, it used to be that the masjid has a green light there indicating where the tawaf starts from. I'm not sure if that's still there. Inshallah, it's still there to indicate to you where you should start your tawaf from, which is in front of the Hajj al-Aswad. The author, he says, وَيَسْتَلِمُهُ وَيُقَبِّلُهُ The person, the person, he makes taslim of the Hajj al-Aswad and he kisses it. And if it's difficult for him to do that, to make the taslim and to kiss it, then he would kiss his hand after touching the stone. And if it's difficult for him to even touch the Hajj al-Aswad, then he just points to it. Sheikh Manhu Suwur, he says, From that which is recommended for the one who's making tawaf is to kiss the black stone. And this is, of course, the ulama they mentioned only if there is not a rush. If there's, um, if there's a lot of congestion and it's going to be harmful to the person himself or to other people for him to go to the Hajj al-Aswad, then the person leaves it off because the wajib is to protect oneself and to protect, to protect others. So in this situation, the wajib takes the precedence over the sunnah. Uh, so this is sunnah that the Prophet would kiss the black stone and this has levels. The first of them, the first of them that the person should try to touch the uh, to touch the stone with his right hand and then he would kiss his right hand. And this is reported from the Prophet if he's unable to kiss the black stone itself, then he touches the black stone with his right hand and then he kisses his right hand. In shakka dalik, if he's unable to do even that, then the person touches the black stone with something and then he kisses that something that he used. We felt in Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam because we have the hadith in Sahih Muslim which showed that the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam did so. Rawa Abu Tufail, Abu Tufail, Rabbi Allah, and he said, I saw the Prophet making tawaf around the Kaaba, around the house. And the Prophet he touched the black stone with a stick and then he kissed that stick. 
انشق ذلك اشار اليه بيده ولا يقبلها وهذا ورد عن رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم ان if the person's in a situation where he can't even touch the black stone with a stick with a stick or something of that nature then he just points to the black stone with his right hand but he doesn't kiss his right hand in this situation وهنا ينبه الى ان الاشاره تكون باليد اليمنى لا بجميع اليدين وكذا المسح على الحجر يكون باليمنى and uh, Sheikh Mansour said it's important to point out that when you are touching when you are touching the stone, the black stone, then you will do with your right hand. And even if you are not able to touch it and you are just pointing to the black stone, again, it will be with only your right hand and not both of your hands. Both he says, And in doing so, when you're touching the, uh, when you are making the tawaf, you would say, the du'as which have been reported. Sheikh Mansouri says, أَيْ يَقُولُ مَا وَرَدَ مِنْ أَدْعِيَا مِنَ الْأَدْعِيَةِ حَالَ الْقَوَى That you say the du'as which have been reported for whilst a person makes a du'af. وَقَدْ وَرَدَ فِي الْقَوَافِ إِدَّةُ الْأَدْعِيَا And it's been narrated a variety of du'as when the person makes du'af from them. In the ibtida'a tawaf, at the beginning of the du'af, the person says, بِسْمِ اللَّهِ وَاللَّهُ أَكْبَرُ as collected and narrated, reported by Imam Bayhaqi. وَيَقُولَ إِنْ دَبِدَايَةِ كُلِّ شَوْتٍ بَعْدَ ذَلِكْ إِذَا حَادَ الْحَجْرِ اللَّهُ أَكْبَرُ And when he starts his second, third, fourth, fifth, sixth, and seventh uh, tawaf, then he says Allahu Akbar at the beginning of each of those circuits. So in the first circuit, he says Bismillah wa Allahu Akbar. And thereafter, all of the consecutive circuits, he says Allahu Akbar. Also, we have the dua in the ibtida tawaf. When you start in the tawaf, you should say, Allahumma imanan bika, wa tasdiqan bi kitabika, wa sunnati nabiyika Muhammadin sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Oh Allah, out of iman in you, and out of, um, out of accepting the truthfulness of your book and the truthfulness of the sunnah of your messenger Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And also thirdly, qawluhu bayna al-rukn wal-hajr. And also to say between the rukan, between the pillar and the black stone, Rabbana atina fi dunya hasanatan wa fi al-akhirati hasana wa qina azad al-nar. As collected by Imam Ahmed and Abi Dawood. The author, he says, Wa yaj'al al-bayta an yasari. And he puts the, he puts the house to his left shoulder as he's making tawaf. Yajib ala man yatuf an yaj'al al-bayta an yasari hala tawaf. Sheikh Masood said it's obligatory to put the house on your left when you're making a tawaf. فَأَلَى النَّبِيِّ صَلَى اللَّهِ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَمُ وَقَدْ قَالْ كَمَا فِي صَحِيْ الْمُسْلِمُ The Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم did that. And he said, as in صحيح المسلم, لِتَأْخُدُوا مَنَاسِكَكُمْ That the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم, when he did the rites of hajj, he said, I'm doing this to show you how to do your rites of hajj. So take from me the rites of the hajj. قَوْلُهُ The author, he says, وَيَطُوفُ سَبْعًا The person has to make seven circuits. Sheikh Masur, wal murad an yikun tawaf sab'ata ashwad. And the intent is that you make seven circuits of the house. Wala yasahu atatawwa bi qal min dhalik. And it's not allowed for you to make um, superrogatory tawaf less than that. Fa in tawfa aqal min sab'a. So if the person makes less than seven circuits around the uh, Kaaba, for who are kaman sama ba'd al nahar. Then he's like the person who's only fasted part of the day rather than fasting the whole of the day, meaning it's going to be invalid. The author says, That the person, the Ufuqi, he, and we said the Ufuqi is the one that comes from outside of Mecca, uh, from a distance, from a distance of uh, 80 kilometers or more. And this is the Ufuqi. So this Ufuqi, what he should do, uh, he should, pace up, he should be speedy in the first three circuits, and then he should walk normally in the next four circuits. So Sheikh Masood, he says, مما يصوم في الطواف, from that which is recommended in Sunnah in the Tawaf, al-Raman, is to do al-Raman. وهو إسراء المشي مع مقاربة الخطى من غيب وثن. It is to be quick in your walking and to have your footsteps uh, close to one another uh, without jumping. وَهُوَ سُنَّةً فِي الطَّوَافِ بِإِتِّفَاقُ الْأُلَمَاءِ And it is sunnah in the tawaf with the agreement of all of the imams. وَالْحِكْمَةُ مِنْهُ And the wisdom from it is mentioned in Sahih Bukhari al-Muslim. 
before we get this, Sheikh Mansour says, أنه شرع أول ما شرع للإذهار الجل أمام كفار قريش. That the first time it was legislated to do the Raman was done in front of the kuffar of the Quraysh to show um, to show strength. فقد ورد عن ابن عباس for verily it was narrated from Ibn Abbas in Bukhari Muslim. قال المشركون that the Mushrikun they said إنه يقدم عليكم غدا قوم قد وهنتهم الهما that uh, the Quraysh they said tomorrow a people are going to come upon you who have been weakened due to fever because there was news of fever having been spread in Medina. And it has really affected me greatly. So the, these kuffar, they sat and they waited uh, just past the black stone. So the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam commanded the companions to do the Raman in the first three ashwad. And to walk between the two pillars. وفي روايتي أنهم قالوا أي مشركون أن one narration صحيح المسلم المشركون said هؤلاء الذين زعمتم أن الحمى قد وهنتهم are these the people that you were claiming that the fever has made them weak هؤلاء أجلدوا من كذا وكذا rather these are stronger and more determined than such and such so from the reasons of the Quaf was uh, the Rammel in the Quaf al-Qudun was that the Prophet Sallallahu who wanted to show to the Kuffar that the Muslim had strength and determination, not as the Kuffar had thought that they were going to be weak and unable to show any strength. Sheikh Mansour, he said, that the Ramal is only in the Tawaf al-Qudum, or Tawaf al-Umrah, or the Tawaf of the Umrah. As for other than this, then the Ramal is not recommended in it. ومختار الرمل بالنسبة للأشواق and the amount of the rumble pertaining to the circuits يكون في الثلاثة الأولى is that it is in the first three فإن فات فيها فلا يقبيه however if the person is unable to do it in the first three uh, then he doesn't make it up فلا يقبيه في الباقي then the person doesn't make it up in the, less, in the rest of the circuits لأنه سنة فات محلها فسقطت because this is a سنة which has lost its place, so you cannot make it up, it's been dropped. And the Ramal, as we mentioned, is upon the men who are Ufuqeen. Ufuqi. Ufuqi, he is the one that made Ihram from outside of Mecca. As for Ahlul Mecca, as for the people of Mecca, then they are not to do the speedy uh, walking in the first three uh, circuits. The hadith Ibn Umar, Anna Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Kana idha tafa fi hajj wal umra awala ma yaklum, yamshi arba. Umar radiallahu anhu mentioned that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa when he would come to hajj, then and he would do the Umrah, that the first thing he would do when he would enter is that he would make tawaf around the house two times very quickly, and then he would walk in the next four. And because the Ramal, as we said, it was legislated in essence in its beginning to show strength to the people of that land, that the Muslims, they had strength and determination. And this meaning is not found in the people of Mecca because they are from the people of that land themselves. Uh, Sheikh Sami ibn Abd al-Rahman al in his explanation of Zad al he said, if the original, he's posing a point, he's saying, if the original intent was to show strength as outsiders to the people of the land, and, and especially that they were kuffar, then now that this is gone, then why is this a sunnah which remains? So he says, He said that the, re the remaining of the ruling, though it's illa, its purpose, its reasoning has gone, doesn't negate the ruling. Because there is another illa, there's another reason. And it is, And it is that the Muslims, they remember the favor of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala upon them. 
كما قال الشيخ طين طين رحمة الله عليه and it is that to remember the favor of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that after being weak that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave them strength and after being bitten in the land then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made them many as Imam Shirqiti said in his book Adwa al-Bayyan and also it was narrated that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam ramala fi hajjati wada that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam uh, he made in the in the farewell hajj that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam actually did do the ramal so therefore, it's taken to be a sunnah which is continual forever. The author, he said, That every time the person passes the hajr and the Yemeni pillar, then the person makes, makes his Islam. Okay? Okay? And the evidence for this is well, uh, what is mentioned about the Prophet ﷺ in Ahmad and Abi Dawood from Ibn Umar radiallahu anhu. كان رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم لا يدعو أن يستلم ركن اليمانية والحجر في كل طوفة. That the Prophet ﷺ wouldn't leave off making his Islam of the uh, Yemeni pillar and the black stone in each of the circuits that he would do. And Nafi' he said وكان عبد الله بن عمر يفعله. And Abdullah ibn Umar he used to do so. When Murad bil Istislam and the intent with Istislam, as mentioned by Shaykh Masood, and Yamsaha alayhi bin Yameen is to touch the black stone and to touch the Yemeni pillar with his right hand. And it is not to say, and you don't say when you are doing that touching any particular dua. And that is because it wasn't narrated from the Prophet to say a particular dua when touching the black stone or the Yemeni pillar. And this is only to be done, meaning that istilam, istilam is to only be done, that istilam is only to be done when there is an absence of difficulty in you doing it. And if it is difficult upon the person to touch the black stone, then it suffices him that when he gets to the black stone and the proximity of the black stone, then he just points towards it. He doesn't try to touch it because that would be dangerous for him and dangerous for others. However, pertaining to the Yemeni pillar, if he's unable to touch it, then he doesn't point to it, as that was not reported from the Prophet So if the person cannot touch the black stone, when he gets to its, its proximity, its vicinity, he points towards the black stone. But he doesn't do that for the Yemeni pillar. The author said, And whoever leaves of something from the tawaf. Sheikh Mansur said, the author is mentioning a variety of situations where the tawaf is not going to be valid. If the person leaves off something from the tawaf, so herein, the tawaf is not going to be valid for him. Like a person leaves off one circuit, or he leaves off more than that. Like the person, he does maybe just five circuits, or something similar to that, then the uh, tawaf as a whole is not going to be valid for him, because he left off, um, left off not completing seven complete circuits. Sheikh Sami bin Abdurrahman, he mentions uh, a mas'ala. He says, if a person has shak, doubt when making the tawaf, what does he do? If he's doubtful, did I make five or did I make six? Question to yourselves, what does he do in this situation? If a person is making tawaf, but he's now doubting himself, did I make four or did I make five? Circuit, what does he do? Sheikh Sami ibn Abdurrahman, he said, Qal al Hadabila. Okay, somebody's answering. Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum salam He goes with the what he has yakin on. Barakallah fiqh, and what is that? What is what? What is the yakin in this situation? The lesser number. May Allah raise you. I mean, Zakallah khair. 
So the Hanabila, they say, and the Yubna al Yaqeen, that the person who builds upon Yaqeen, wa Ya'qud bi Adad al Aqal. So that is that he takes the lesser number. That is the Yaqeen that for sure he did four. When he's doubtful, did he do four or five? Then for sure he did four. So he continues as though he was on number four. Uh, the author, he said, or oh, the person didn't intend the tawaf. If the person is making tawaf without having done intention for that, then this tawaf is also going to be invalid. Sheikh Mansur said, if the person makes tawaf without the intention, like a person, for example, he's going around around the Kaaba, but he didn't intend the tawaf. But the person, for example, had another intention, like he was looking for somebody. So whilst he's looking for somebody, he ended up doing three tawaf. Okay? And then he says to himself, well, I've gone around the Kaaba three times. Let me now turn this into an act of worship of tawaf and complete seven. So if, if, because there was no niyyah here, the person's tawaf is not going to be valid. Because the actions are tied to the intentions, as we know. The author, he says, another situation where the tawaf is not valid, or the person makes the tawaf in the wrong direction. Sheikh Masoori says the third of these situations is if the person makes the tawaf in the wrong direction. Whereupon he put the Kaaba on his right instead of his left. So in this situation, his tawaf is not going to be valid. And that is because he went against the guidance of the Prophet in the Torah. And whoever does an action which is in opposition to the guidance of the Prophet then his action is going to be thrown back to him, rejected. What he said, or he made tawaf upon the shadrawan. Sheikh Masul says the fourth thing which invalidates the tawaf. إذا طاف على الشذروان وشذروان بفتح الذاب. If he does this upon the shadrawan, which is mentioned with a فتحة on the ذاب, البناء المحيط بالكعبة الفاصل عن جدارها هو الآن رخام. This is this is a, um, a structure which is attached to the Kaaba, uh, connected to the walls of the Kaaba. Now it's made of marble. Okay, what kind of isabir? And it used to be in the past that it was flat. So this, what you find at the bottom of the walls of the Kaaba, now it's slightly slanted. It's, it's going downwards and it's made of marble. But in the past, it used to be flat and people were able to walk on it. And tawaf upon that would not be permissible and it wouldn't be acceptable, not allowed to do it. And the reason for that, and the valley coming and bait, because that is part of the Kaaba, part of the building of the Kaaba. Allah Ta'ala Yaqul and Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala says, and make tawaf uh, around the Kaaba. And the bahi in the verse, bil bayt al is for isti'ab. Isti'ab meaning that it compromising, it, it uh, includes even the, it includes everything which is connected to the Kaaba. And because the Prophet will make tawaf outside of that, he wouldn't step on the shadrawan. Okay, so the shadrawan is something which supports the Kaaba, the, the walls of the Kaaba. Uh, in the past, it used to be flat, now it's slanted and it's made of marble. Um, so, Sheikh Sami Sukhair, in his explanation of Rawal Murda, Hafizahullah, he said that um, Ibn Taymiyyah in the past, when it was flat, he used to allow that the people, if they step on that, okay, they should avoid it. But if they do step on that and walk on that, then the, then the tawaf is still acceptable. And the author, he says, Aw jidar al -hijr, or the walls of the hijr. The hijr is the bow-shaped uh, structure, which is next to the Kaaba or in front of the Kaaba, a semicircle structure, which is in front of the Kaaba. Sheikh Mansour, he says, al khamisa the fifth thing which will invalidate your tawaf, إذا طاف على الجدار الحجر, if the person makes the tawaf upon the walls of the hijr, والحجر بكسر الحاء, and the hijr with the kasr on the ha, المقدار الذي تركت, تركت الخريش بناءه من الكعبة, 
It is that part which the Quraysh left off from building as being part of the Kaaba. And it is that which was upon the foundations of the Kaaba that Ibrahim alayhi salam had built. So if a person somehow makes the wall on, on these uh, on that hijr, that bow-shaped area, then his tawaf is not going to be accepted. Because um, it is not accepted for the same reason as being not accepted for the shadra one. So literally what they mean by making tawaf of the hijr is not walking on it, is to walk uh, within it, is to walk. So you have the Kaaba, and after the Kaaba, you have that bow-shaped uh, structure, a bow-shaped wall. So if somebody was to walk between the Kaaba and that bow-shaped structure, then the Tawaf is not going to be valid. Or the person makes the Tawaf, or that the person's aura is uncovered. So Sheikh Mansour, he said, Asadisa, from the sixth thing which would invalidate the Tawaf, if the person makes it naked with his aura uncovered. So the uh, Kufar, the polytheists, they would make Tawaf Uryan, naked. And if they couldn't find clothing from the Quraysh, then they would just make Tawaf naked. And some of them would say, That we're not going to make tawaf in clothing that we have used to disobey Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Ajeeb is. You know what's ajeeb about it? SubhanAllah, some people today, when they make Hajj or Umrah, they're willing to use haram money for that Hajj or Umrah. Like they've got money which is in riba accounts, for example, or from riba based transactions, they've made profits and they're willing to use that money. But here, the kuffar of the Quraysh. He's saying we're not going to disobey Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the clothing that we wore whilst disobeying Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So when Islam came, the Prophet ordered somebody to call out, that nobody as a polytheist can make hajj after this year. And you're not allowed to make tawaf around the house whilst being, whilst having your aura uncovered, as mentioned in the Bukhari Muslim. So based upon this, it's uh, it's a condition that the person has his aura covered when making tawaf. The author says, "Oh, najisan lam yasih," or the person has najis on his body or clothing, then the tawaf is not going to be valid. As-sabi'ah, Shaykh Masul says, the seventh, إِذَا طَافَ وَعَلَيْهِ نَجَاسَ If a person makes tawaf and upon him is najasa, لِأَنَّ مِنْ شُرُوطِ السِّحَةِ tawaf Because from the conditions for the validity and the correctness of tawaf, is to نَبُوا نَجَاسَةَ فِي الثَّوْبِ وَالْبَدْنِ Is to avoid the najasa in your clothing and on from your body. فَلَا يَسِحُوا بِدُونِهَا So without this avoidance, the tawaf is not going to be valid. In Tirmidhi, Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, Prophet Sallallahu said, At-tawafu hawl al-bayt mithlu salah That tawaf around the Kaaba is like the prayer. Illa anna kum tatakallamuna fihi Except you are allowed to speak when making the tawaf. So here the Prophet Sheikh Masul says, Wa salatu yashtaritu fiha istinabu najasa And the salah, it's, it's uh, obligatory that you avoid najasa in the salah. Therefore, because the Prophet ﷺ made the tawaf like the salah, you also have to avoid the najasa in the tawaf. The author, he says, Rahimullah, Then the person, after having making the tawaf, seven circuits, then he prays two rak'ah behind the maqam of Ibrahim ﷺ. Mansur says, Sheikh Mansur, When the person has finished the tawaf, then it's sunnah for him to pray to Raka'ah. And this should be behind the maqam of Ibrahim. And Because this is from the guidance of the Prophet وسلم, that when he finished the tawaf, he prayed to Raka'ah behind the maqam of Ibrahim السلام, and he read the ayah. 
and take from the Maqam of Ibrahim a place to pray. And also in the hadith of Umar in Bukhari Muslim, Wafaqtu Umar radiallahu anhu said, Wafaqtu Rabbi fi salah. I was able to agree with my Lord, meaning Allah Azawajal, in three. What he means here is that he was able to say something which Allah Azawajal agreed with in three matters. فَقُلْتُ يَا رَسُولُ اللَّهِ So I said, O oh, Messenger of Allah, in one of these matters, لَوْ اتَّخَذْنَ مِنْ مَقَامِ إِبْرَاهِمُ وَصَلَّى uh, Why don't we take behind the place of uh, Ibrahim alayhi salam, behind the maqam, a place where we pray. فَنَزَلَتْ So then the ayah was revealed, وَاتَّخِذُ مِنْ مَقَامِ إِبْرَاهِمُ وَصَلَّى Take behind the place of Ibrahim a place to pray. وَلِفَعْلِ النَّبِي صَلَى اللَّهِ سَلَّمْ وَلَوْ صَلَّى فِي غَيْرِ فِي غَيْرِهِ مِنْ أَمَاكِنِ الْحَرَمْ أَجْزَأَهُ And because this was done by the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم, however, Sheikh Masood says, if the person prays in any other place in the Haram, these two raka'ah, then that would suffice and that would be valid. وَيُسْتَحَبُّ أَنْ يَقْرَأْ فِيهِمَا And it's recommended that the person prays in these two raka'ah, two raka'ah, in these raka'atayn, suratay al-ikhlas wal kafirun surat al-ikhlas and kafirun He felt in Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam because that is what the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam did. <coughs> Sheikh Sami bin Abd al-Rahman, he says that if there's a situation that after you've made the tawaf, that the iqama is established, what should you do? He said that the humble scholars and the shafi scholars, they say, anna salat al-farida tudzi'u an raka'atay tawaf, that the that the obligatory salah, which is now being established after you have made the tawaf, then this will suffice you from having to make two rakah up behind the maqam of Ibrahim. Because the intent is that a salah should be done after the tawaf. And because Ibn Abbas gave fatwa, he said, but, uh, he said, if a person finishes his tawaf, وَأُقِيمَتْ الصَّلَاةِ And the salah has been established. فَإِنَّ الْمَكْتُوبَ تُجْزِئُ عَنْ رَكْعَةِ الْتَوَاةِ Then verily that obligatory prayer, prayer will suffice him from the, uh, having to do the nafil prayer, having to do those two rak'ah. And this was mentioned by Al-Fakihi فِي أَخْبَارِ مَكَّةِ طيب. I think we'll stop here inshallah before rather than having to rush through uh, the points which I was hoping to finish before we move on. But we'll stop here, inshallah, and we'll continue next week, inshallah. Uh, if you have any points or questions, then feel free. Wa jazakumullah khair.